All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. My name is Joe Zanka, your host, co-founder and COO of On Demand Storage, who sponsors the podcast. And today I'm with my guest, John Meadows of Mountain Dog Diet and Granite Supplements. John, what's going on? Hi, Joe. Thanks for having me. Just uh, enjoying some sun for once here in Ohio. It's a, it's a nice day. We're getting through the winter, I think, finally. I know. It feels like that here in Boston, too. It's like probably in the mid fifties today, you know, and last week was like 20. So it's, uh, it's good to get out of that phase, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, man, I'm, I'm excited to have you on. Um, you know, I think that what you're doing is very interesting. Um, it's unlike any other guest I've had on when it comes to talking about, um, supplements and diet, you know, I have my own little stack over here of, of supplements and dietary products that I take on a pretty daily basis. And so something that resonates with me, I think it's something that, um, a lot of people are, are focusing on more and more, um, you know, in 2021 than maybe ever before. And so, but let's talk about you. Let's talk about, um, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself um, and how you got into uh, this industry. Well, the, the health and fitness industry, I'm an old timer. So I actually, I'm a retired uh, professional bodybuilder, but I actually did my first contest when I was 13 years old. So I, um, I got into this industry very, at a very young age and, um, I trained my whole life, um, about to turn 49 uh, in April here, but I started off as a bodybuilder. I really loved training and enjoyed the sport. And at some point when I was probably around college, I started coaching people and, you know, coaching different athletes and, and, doing things of that nature. And I, um, I wanted to kind of work in the corporate world though. So I was essentially, I transitioned into the corporate world and ended up landing, uh, at Chase, actually I ended up in the banking industry. I was there for many, many years. I was there for 10 years at JP Morgan Chase. And, um, at the same time I was coaching athletes and really good athletes. So it was very demanding, but, um, that's a pretty unique thing in, in the health and fitness industry, industry to have someone come from that type of background and yep. to do that. You know, I was a project manager uh, for retail operations. I can tell you more about a teller machine at banks than you'd ever want to know. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, at some point said, you know, this is probably a little too much. I got to focus on one or the other. So I resigned at the bank and I started coaching people full time. I, I built a website that had a uh, membership site on there. I started writing, actually writing training programs for people. Um, I've probably wrote more training programs in the industry than I think probably anybody else in history. I've, I've wrote a lot of programs and it's something I love. It's something I really enjoy. Uh, I knew I was on the right track. I got featured in Forbes magazine a couple years in oh, wow. when my businesses were doing really good and um, enough. That wasn't enough. So then I started a sports supplement company, uh, which is Side note, a much tougher industry. And uh, so I've been kind of just doing those two things ever since. The, the sports supplement company I've owned for four years now. And um, the coaching I still do. And I still have the membership website. So it's a lot. And I, plus I coach football too. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, you're a busy guy. Well, actually what I was doing before I got on this call is I was designing some plays. Uh, so I love to, I love football, man. I love to study football. So Anyways, that's a, that's kind of a quick high level of me. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now mountain dog diet would be the, the, the training program. And then the supplement program is, is the second company you kind of opened. Yes. It's called granite supplements. That's correct. And we, we, um, we're doing really well. We have, we have some professional athletes, um, some NFL players and um, lots and lots of like, just, it's a real good variety of people. Uh, the, the company isn't really steered towards bodybuilders, even though I come from that background. It's, um, I mean, we've got a, just a wide variety of consumers that use our products, but yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that keeps us busy as well. So is this company now grant supplements, is it more of a, uh, how do people find your products? Is it storefronts or is it more of an e-commerce type of business or how does that work? Well, I have really three outlets, um, or, so Amazon is one of them we do well on. Then we have websites, we have direct consumer sales and then in stores. So we have wholesale accounts and different stores across the country as well. So really you've got three, three different ways you can find us. That noise is my dog snoring, by the way. <laughs> what so kind of dog you have? I just got, he's a puppy. It's American bull. It's an American bully, but he makes oh, wow. some really weird sounds. I think he's dreaming. Hey, buddy. <laughs> 
I have an English bulldog my side. She's, believe it or not, she's 13 years old. English bulldog. 13. They do not last wow. that long typically. I don't know what she just keeps, she doesn't quit. So, but yeah, you know, they're great dogs. I love the American ones too. They're great. Yeah. Um, so take me back to the beginning when you first jumped into being, you know, a business owner, entrepreneur. I mean, um, you know, knowing what you know now about, like you mentioned, you know, the, the supplement industry is a little bit tougher to get off the ground versus the training industry. Knowing what you know now just about being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, you know, what would you tell yourself, I guess, at the beginning to be prepared for, you know, to, to, to expect? Yeah, I think I did a lot of things right. And I also think I did a lot of things wrong. Um, I think the things that I did right was I was always I was never infatuated with the money part. I was infatuated with taking good care of people. And, you know, I think that I was able to build a really good base of my businesses through integrity. Sure. And I know a lot of people say that, but they don't really practice it, particularly in our, in our industry. So I, um, I was very fortunate. I have a YouTube channel as well. I got about half a million subscribers on it. And really? I do nothing ultra fancy it's just trying to help people and really my model has just been taking care of people and treating people right you know just the really basic fundamental principles of being being a good human being I think I did that right and I think that put me on a good track now it didn't put me on the fast track I've had to kind of grind my way through the years yeah. um, but my business has always had that base so I might not have had this but what I've had is I've had this yep you know, yeah. I've had I've had steady progress every single year. Um, and then I did some bad things, too. You know, when I started Granite Supplements, I looked really I was kind of in it was a new industry. It was wasn't a new industry, but it was a new part of the business. I wasn't familiar with formulating supplements and things like that. That's that's a little different than coaching somebody. Right. I mean, so I um, you know, when I started hiring people and building a team, I was like, well, who are the best people in the industry who know the industry well? In other words, I was looking for experience. And so I hired a lot of people with a lot of experience and it didn't turn out the way I thought it would. Um, I had a lot of problems with employees. We just, we had a lot of issues and the company almost went belly up. Um, after about two years, um, I was like thinking to myself every day, I was waking up and I was saying, why am I doing this to myself? Like, I don't need the money. Why am I torturing myself with this business? that's going nowhere and that has sucked a lot of money out of my personal account. And um, so I, I really refocused um, at a fundamental level and hiring good people. And I, I stopped worrying about who had the most experience. And I started hiring people like who's the best people, like who can I trust? Who can I trust to have a conversation with a store? Who can I trust that'll carry the message that I wanna send? So I started looking more for good people and not experience. And when we did that, when we went to that model, the company's done great. It doubled in size last year. It's probably going to double again this year. Um, unfortunately, it was a lesson I learned the hard way, and it probably slowed our company's growth down by a couple of years. But hey, you live and you learn. You know, the other thing is, I think when you say the word entrepreneurial, um, I think a lot of people, they have no idea what that entails effort-wise. Like when you start a business, I think people see the glory and, oh, you know, I work on my own schedule and life's easy. I'll just come and go as I please. I'll make all kinds of money. But when you start a business, you have to be ready to grind and grind a lot of hours. I mean, I left the bank and which I was working a lot of hours. And when I started these businesses, I actually worked more. So I didn't work less. I worked more. And but you have to really babysit businesses when you start them you have to know everything that's going on or you have to have a phenomenal team one or the other me as a business owner I like to kind of know what's going on I you know I have no problem delegating but I at least like to have some idea what's going on in different areas but um it's a lot of hard work and we like I'll just tell you like this my supplement company we never even made a profit until we were deep into our third year yeah. So at any point, I could have just quit and said, we're not making any money. So you have to, you know, there's some sacrifice involved. You don't just start exactly. a business and then boom, you're rich, right? Definitely not. Definitely not. That's the one thing that um, is the toughest part to get across to people is like, it's, it's not one of those things. I mean, it takes time. It, it takes a lot of patience. It, it will test every ounce of your patience. Um, and it will, you basically have to put in 
the all the work and you got to do it for I would say yeah three four five years until you really start to you know come out of the other side with a like you know going in the direction that you want to start going and you know what I mean not, not that it's not building while you're putting in on the work in the, in the early stages but you know it's not one of those things where you can just flick on and have it be what you want it to be and and I would say even as a business owner myself it's like you know you want things to go fast. You want things to, you know, you, like you said, you got to be patient, but at the end of the day, um, you have to have the wherewithal that like, if you're going to start something new, it's probably going to take double or triple the amount of time that you think it's going to take for it to like truly succeed. It's just going to take a while for yeah. one reason or another, you know, you're going to run into an issue, whether it be in operations, whether it be in marketing, whether it be in sales, whether it be in finance that you weren't expecting that's going to like, impede on your the growth that you had thought you could achieve and um that's just the truth a lot of the time until you're you know this expert in business and even they probably run into the same problems all the time too but at the end of the day when you're just starting out um it is not an easy journey and you brought up a couple of points you know i've been at times where just like you were with a supplement company you're looking at yourself and you're saying like why am i still trying to <laughs> do what like this isn't it's not benefiting me you know i'm working double the hours i'm making less than half the money like it's just not a thing that i see like you know maybe you have a trouble even seeing past where it is that day you know you mean just like how can i when am i going to get to the next step but i feel like if you just stick it out if it's not like a a truly bad plan like are, are you just selling something that doesn't work if you just stick it out it's gonna it's gonna get there if you if you want it to yeah and i think that that uh, level of commitment, man, like, I mean, it's got to be there, though. You're right. It's got to be, be there. there. If it's not there, then you're, you're probably, you're probably in trouble. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, so, and even my coaching business and all that, I, I mean, you know, I do really well now, but there was seven to 10 years of me writing and trying to help people before anybody really knew who I was nationally. Um, so even though that part of my business has done really well, I mean, that took a really long base, you know, I, back then, you know, I'm a little older, but back then I didn't have all the social media stuff that people have nowadays, but it, it was, I mean, I put in a lot of years writing for magazines and, yep. you know, just doing everything I could think of to, you know, get my name out there nationally as a coach. And so, you know, um, I think, like I said, you know, sometimes the road to get there is a long road and people just don't have enough patience. I, I, I totally agree. Talk to me about your social media economy. I think that's, that's great. You have that many followers. I mean, that's like such an important thing nowadays. I, I put a lot of value into, um, you know, if you, people who follow you or subscribe to your account, I mean, you know, it's, there's never been a time I feel like in history where, you know, uh, the everyday citizen could be almost like, you know, have like a little bit of a celebrity status. Like it's like, you know, the people in the past that became, you know, quote unquote, like famous or people followed were just, you know, Hollywood stars or these big, like giant icons. But now, I mean, you could build a cool little following of people um, who, who like to watch your content. So how did you start on YouTube? And, um, and, and, and maybe, you know, did, did you put a plan into gaining that many followers or did it just kind of happen organically? Well, what I, so remember I mentioned I was writing training programs and yep. I wanted to make sure that people knew how to do the exercises properly that I was putting in there. So what I would do is I would film like a 15 second video of me doing the exercise and I would put the link in their training program. So I might say, you know, for example, a bench press, you know, do whatever on the bench press. And then there would be a link someone could click on and go to my YouTube and they would see, oh, here's how he wants me to bench press. So it was never to make any money or anything. It was just to support my training programs visually so people could see what I was doing because at that point, nobody ever did that for training programs. They would just write stuff down and you just had to hope you knew what they were talking about. Right, right. And then at some point, I started seeing all these people like doing really well on YouTube. Like in our industry, there were some guys that were, and they were making a lot of money to be honest with you. And I thought, man, that little 15 second video I did, what if I'd have made it three minutes and really explained it better and really put more effort into the video. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just to support my training programs, but it's just to educate more people. So um, this was about three and a half years ago. I, I think it was about three and a half years ago. So I hired a video guy and I said, you know, I think we can make some money at this. And he was already, he was already pretty good at it. 
Um, so we, the first 45 days, we made a video every single day. And then for a year, we did five videos a week for a year. Um, and the channel went from 25,000 and shot up to 100,000. The next year it shot up to 200,000. And then I pulled it back to about three videos a week. And for the last couple of years, I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday videos. So I, I generally do three videos a week. Um, but it does a lot of things. Uh, it, it helps people like just generally see how to do exercises. It's just informational. Um, you know, I try to put things on there that are motivational. So there's, there's a lot of things you can do in terms of motivating people, in terms of helping people, in yep. terms of answering their questions. Mm -hmm. And um, it turned out to just, you know, it just was like a snowball. It got better and better. And, and so it's doing really well now. Um, but it wasn't until three or four years ago, I was like, I was, you know, I started getting educated on YouTube and I was like, wait a minute, YouTube has, they have no reason for me to, they don't want to see me fail. The better I do, the more money they make off ad right. revenue. So, right. you know, if they're getting 40 cents for every dollar I make, then they're going to want me to do really well. So I need to make good videos and yeah, I don't see YouTube, um, slowing down anytime soon. I mean, it's a phenomenal, um, phenomenal channel, uh, you know, uh, tool for business well, owners it's fantastic i mean i um I, i've just started diving into it like i said when i made this podcast about six months ago and and um and yeah i'd love to pick your brain just outside of even this about you know how to approach um you know just owning a channel the way that you are because i think there, like i said there's so much value in building a following i mean for the, the sense that you know you can do youtube enjoys it when you do and um and they reward people who do um but then at the end of the day you know, you could, you could do, just do so much with it. You know, you could just um, help promote your business on it. You know, you could probably put out a, an online class or a book or a little ebook that like you already have 500,000 potential buyers. It's like, you know, or just, but even without the money, you know, it's just like, it's a great thing to just have. And, and then people, you know, you gain credibility as a human, as a business owner, as a, as an expert in an area. You know. Yeah, and it supports all the other businesses too, as you mentioned. You know, I can <clears throat> I can explain. You know, here's a supplement. Here's why I take it. So now it's supporting another business. Um, right. Right. You know. Um, so yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, you see some of the guys like you know Joe Rogan, who, I mean, he has the biggest podcast going, um, but he buys or joins force with a company like On It, promotes it on there. You know, it has a lot of guests like uh, yourself, even who talk about fitness and health and, and mental, uh, you know, support, taking supplements, all these things, and then promotes his own brand on there, uh, his own product, which is the, uh, the on it brand. It's just a, a this double headed sword that I'm, I'm sure just yeah. like has skyrocketed that business. So you could just do so much with it. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, and you seem like you're on your way and figuring out, you know, how to, how to keep, doing that with your businesses. Cause it's a, uh, it's a great little thing to have. So do you, you, you've never had any partners in business, have you? Um, I, I do. I have partners now uh, with the supplement company. I have okay. some really good partners that nice. my, my mountain dog business, the name mountain dog comes from me loving Bernie's mountain dogs, by the way, I'm a big oh, wow. dog guy. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> that business has always just kind of been my own. Um, but the, the granite business, I have some <laughs> business partners there that are really good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, now, have you had any, like in your career, maybe mentors or role models that you've been able to, um, you know, kind of pick their brains on or, or help you get started in some of these different um, ventures that you're in? hundred percent. I'm always, I've always had a couple mentors to help me. I've always, I've always tried to seek out people that were more knowledgeable than me and, and people that maybe had to fight through some things so they could help steer me away from doing dumb stuff. Um, but I've been fortunate. I, I, I am surrounded by some really, really sharp people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I think it's so important to just um, continue to surround yourself with sharp people, you know, people who have been, in, been there and done that before, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from this podcast, just talking to people who have had success in their life. And, and a common theme seems to be that they're willing to give back their knowledge and, uh, and talk to others. And so I, I found that that's um, been something that I've also in my career kind of leaned a little heavy on is just, you know, making sure that I have people around me that um, if I have questions or, you know, doubts or anything like that, you know, you can kind of go to them to ask, um, pick their brain, you know, whenever you need to. And um, 
just help, you know, they can just be a well of information for, for you and support. Um, and then my hope is to, you know, eventually just continue to give that back as I continue to grow my, uh, my business career. Yeah, absolutely. So, my last question for you um, is, uh, you know, obviously with COVID going on, um, it's been something that's been disruptive to a lot of businesses or just life in general. Um, do you have anything that you've kind of learned from dealing with something like COVID that maybe you could offer as a bit of encouragement to the audience? You know, something that maybe you were able to to do despite, um, you know, what the, all the negative aspects of, of something like COVID-19 or something that maybe you learned about uh, yourself or just the world in general? Well, for me, um, in particular, my um, coaching business and then also uh, the supplement business, we were impacted by it because people couldn't go to the gym, right? right. I mean, gyms were closed. So if people aren't going to the gym, they're not going to buy training programs from me. And, um, and actually, my actual, actually, my YouTube took a massive dip because a lot of the people that watch that watch to see what I'm doing in the gym. But if I'm not in the gym... So what I did was I thought, well, how can people train without going to the gym? And I, I put together a lot of videos to allow people to still do, do workouts, even if they couldn't go to the gym, things that they could do at home. So um, I think people really appreciated that, that I was still trying to help them. And yes, I didn't continue to sell as many programs. We didn't sell as many supplements, but I think the YouTube picked back up. And I think people said, well, wow, he's, he didn't leave us hanging. He's still trying to help us. And then the interesting thing is um, we had a down April. April was a, of last year was the worst month we had. And then in uh, May, it was pretty bad too. And then in June around here, a lot of the gyms opened back up and not all over the country, but partially in different parts of the country. And um, we had the So April and May were bad. And then June, all of a sudden, we have the best month in our company's history. And um, and then the, the um, programs and coaching started booming. And, you know, we finished the year last year, both businesses way above expectations. So, you know, I think when you get in a situation like that, it's obviously different business to business. But, you know, for me, I just tried to think about, well, I can't do the normal things that I do to help people. But what are some alternative things I can do? Mm -hmm. Again, that's going to vary depending on what kind of business you're in, but I think it I think it did help pay off, and I think when things picked back up here, it definitely helped my business. Absolutely. Well, that's the cool thing about it is that it gave you some time to maybe think about you know, some alternative um, alternative ways to promote yourself, alternative um, exercise things that you could promote to your 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 clients, or your customers, or your followers. Um, just kind of probably open your mind creatively, and also you know. To a, to a new world of opportunity where now that hopefully things have started to pick back up again, gyms are starting to open again. Um, you can maybe take some of the things that you learned or some of the, um, the value that you were able to gain maybe during those slower times into, um, you know, the, the more normal traditional business that you were running beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It definitely made me think outside the box. So <laughs> as they well, say, I'm glad you uh, were able to handle it well. And I'm glad that, um, you know, things are continuing to pick back up and go well to this day. And I think that, you know, now that gyms are back open, hopefully more people are going than ever. Um, I think that, you know, something like COVID-19 hopefully puts an emphasis on fitness and well and wellness and, and, um, and vitamin intake and all that stuff. Um, because when you think about it, the people that it's most harmful to, you know, are the ones that um, maybe haven't taken all the precautions in the past to, to, to make sure they're healthy and, and, and it really attacks those who, who don't. So, you know, I'm hoping just for a personal level and, and you too, I bet um, that that just becomes a more of an emphasis than ever before um, going into this new normal type of situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So John, this has been awesome. I really appreciate uh, you coming on here, sharing uh, your story with us and talking a little bit of business. Um, you know, I've, I've enjoyed that. Where can people find you? I, I'd love the people to be able to, to check out some of the stuff that you're doing, um, some of your businesses and maybe your YouTube channel as well. Yeah. So my um, YouTube channel and my Instagram are both mountain dog one, the number one. And um, my website is mountain dog diet.com. And the supplement company is granitesupplements.com. That's where you can find me. Beautiful. Awesome. 
look, John, this has been great. I, uh, I'm going to personally go check out, um, the YouTube channel. Uh, again, I'd love to talk to you a little bit off air about, you know, how, uh, you've been able to do that because I think it's really impressive and a cool thing to have, but, um, Thank you so much again for coming on, sharing your story, and uh, and best of luck to you and everything you're doing. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Best of luck to you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.